<clears throat> I want to welcome everyone again to this, uh, I believe it's the last part of chapter two in Ephesians. Uh, we should be finishing up. I think we'll get it done uh, today. And then uh, we'll be starting chapter three, uh, Lord willing, next week. And I hope that everyone has had a good week leading up to uh, today. As we begin this Ephesians uh, chapter two, um, we're going through verses 19 uh, through 22. We'll be finishing up. And uh, we started out uh, looking at the pictures, uh, the six pictures that we've been given uh, to remember who you are, the six pictures of the church. And um, verse 19a is a picture of the new nation. And picture two uh, is a picture of God's family in 19b, which is so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Uh, picture three is God's building in verse 20 built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Um, picture four, a growing organism in verse 21a, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Uh, B of that same verse is picture, is picture number five, a worldwide temple, the universal church, and picture six is verse 22, a local temple, the local church, which the verse is in him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the spirit. And uh, uh, we were going through the cornerstone last week, we were talking about the cornerstone and building the church. And this week we'll be starting at point two which should be on your packet, we, the church. Amen. All right, so I'm gonna uh, pick up where I left off on that. And before I do that, I'll start the, uh, I'm gonna start a prayer as we begin before we start. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, in thy mighty, wonderful, holy, precious name, King Jesus, we pray and we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you once again, Heavenly Father, that you allow all of us to come together, dear Lord, for this Wednesday night Bible study, Father Christ. We, Father, we pray, dear Lord, uh, for the blessing of the hearers, dear Lord, that you will open their ears and that we all, Heavenly Father, can partake of the food of your word, dear Lord. There's something that we can hear and learn, dear Lord, that we can use to edify and, and, and reach others, dear Lord. And, and reach the whole body of Christ and those that have yet to know you, dear Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we are, are able to be laborers, Heavenly Father, able to go out and, and to the highways and the byways, uh, to the streets and, and the stores, our workplaces, dear Lord, uh, just to share a word, Heavenly Father, and to speak your word, King Jesus, dear Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for each and every opportunity, dear Lord. And we pray as we read this word, Heavenly Father, and we learn in this word, dear Lord, that we are studying to show ourselves approved, dear Lord, to give an answer to those, Heavenly Father, who is uh, deeply in need of hope, dear Lord. Father, we know that many that are dealing with stress of all kinds, mental stress, physical stress, dear Lord, um, financial stress, Heavenly Father, family stress, Heavenly Father, dear Lord. And there is a word for each occasion, each situation, dear Lord. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, we put into the bank, Heavenly Father, your word uh, and deposit that word, dear Lord, that we're able to uh, uh, take something out from that, dear Lord, and give it to others, Heavenly Father. Not to hold on to it, dear Lord, and, and, and just hold on to the word for ourselves and become hoarders, dear Lord, but to actually be a giver of your word, dear Lord, and, and have faith, dear Lord, and power by the uh, Holy Spirit, dear Lord, to give the word out to someone else, dear Lord. And Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I, I rebuke the vision, Heavenly Father, that has become a commonplace, Heavenly Father, 
in this world, in this country, dead Lord, in politics, in the workplace, everywhere, dead Lord. There is so much division, even in the church, dear Lord. There's even a greater uh, division, Heavenly Father. So, dear Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father. As I lift up our senior pastor, uh, Imogene Ingram, dear Lord, I pray your blessing over her and covering her, dear Lord, and keeping her, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for each and every single day, dear Lord, that you continue to bless her, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you on this evening, dear Lord. We thank you for from this morning, dear Lord, to this evening, dear Lord. As I was listening to the prayers this morning, what a blessing it was, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father. In your mighty, wonderful, holy, precious name, King Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Again, I want to welcome everyone again to this uh, Wednesday night Bible study. And we are in your packet. We should You should see point two, we the church. That's where we'll be picking up. And I'll probably be going back and forth. Uh, you might see the screen go back and forth to some pictures uh, in relation to what we are reading. Um, so, you know, don't worry if you don't see me, but I'm still here. Amen. All right. So uh, number point two, we the church are built upon the foundation laid by the testimonies of the apostles and prophets. They surrounded the Lord Jesus Christ himself, their record and testimonies well, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that was, but anyway, um, laid by the testimony of the apostles and prophets, they surrounded the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Their record and testimony of the word of God itself is the foundation upon which the church is to be laid. Can I have a reader for the scriptures? I'll read them. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28, 19, 19 through 20. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts one and eight. For we cannot, for Hold we on. cannot Hold but on. speak. The, excuse me. Chill. Hold yes. on, just a second. Okay. Are you uh, under number two? It should have started off with sanctify them through the truth. Oh. Was that the first scripture? Okay, no, I have the wrong thing. I'm sorry, let someone else read and I'll catch up. Um, yeah, it should I be sanctified then. Mm -mm. You don't have that one? All right, I'll, oh, I'll... It's just a page before. She's a page behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the previous page starts with sanctify them? Yes. You good, Sheila? Or you want me to read it? Go ahead, I, okay. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans 1, 16. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 8 and 10. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sleep slight of men 
and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, Ephesians 4, 14 to 15. For this cause, we also thank God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believeth. First Thessalonians 2.13. Amen. And I, I'm not sure if you're able to see the picture with the apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. You are able to see that? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Um, I figured that was a great picture of building on apostles and prophets. As you can see, uh, Christ is in the center. He's the chief cornerstone. And laid upon that is the apostles and prophets. And then as you can see, uh, you can see the, everyone else is, is after that. And, and the blocks get smaller and smaller, but we know that they're just as great, um, no matter how small the person is as it goes higher, you can see that regardless, they are still great in God's eyes. And as he was reading Ephesians chapter four, um, 11 through 12, I wanted to just uh, speak on the word edifying. And it said, he gave some apostles, some prophets and some evangelists some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now that definition edifying, I looked it up in the Greek and it says, um, now I heard it earlier today and now I'm having a hard time trying to say it. <laughs> I think it's okio, okidomia and the o oikos or oikos, means to manage a household. It means to distribute or to manage administration and work. It means building a house. So, and it also means a house builder, edification, uh, spiritual progress. So you can see even the word edifying in the Greek means managing a house, administrative work, the body coming together uh, to do the work of the Lord, as we all got to do, some are, are ministers, some are prophets, uh, some are teachers, and it's for the perfecting of the saints, it's for the work of the ministry, and for the building of the body of Christ, managing um, the body of Christ, amen? So that's what the church should be doing. All right, point four. It says the church building. The fourth picture is the church is pictured as a growing organism. The word grows is a biological word, the idea of a living organism. The church is pictured as a living organism, the union of various parts of a living being, of a dynamic being, of a dynamic body. This may seem strange to speak a building in biological terms, a building that grows. The point is that more and more parts, more and more believers are brought, are brought and fitted into the building as each day passes. The building grows and grows and shall continue to grow until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. Note another fact as well. Peter calls Jesus Christ the living stone. Christ is the living stone upon which all others are built up a spiritual house. All others have to be built upon him if they wish to live and have that spiritual sacrifice accepted by God. Before we go on, can I have someone um, find Luke 21 verses 5 and 6? Luke 21 verses 5 and 6. I can read it there, Deacon. Kevin. All right, thank you. Uh, Luke uh, 21, verses 5 and 6. And as he, and as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with godly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which you behold, the days will come 
into which there should not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Amen. So there he was he was talking about a, a the temple itself. Um, but we know that that temple back in the, in that day, um, there wasn't the foundation and the cornerstone wasn't Christ. And so he talked about that that uh, temple being brought down. We know that the Romans destroyed it. Uh, but any church, it might not be the building itself, but it'll be the, the people. Any church that's not um, built on the foundation of Christ will soon fall. Yeah, there may be some that's still up and going, uh, but it, it's it's not feeding the body of Christ. It's not feeding according to the word. Uh, it is important to start with Christ and, and allow Christ to be that foundation and everything else is built upon him. Because um, I, I thought about that scripture as he talked about that stones will be, every single stone will be brought down. Um, the importance of having that living, that true living stone. And I thought this here was a good representation again, for even as the body is one and yet has many members and all the members of the body, though there are many are one body, so is Christ being the head of that body. So it's important that we are not divided, that you do have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been saved and you continue to build on that cornerstone and you're not becoming a divider. There isn't isms and schisms in the church or you're not being led away by another false um, uh, word from someone else, another false uh, uh, religion, amen. Uh, and second, uh, first Peter two, four through five, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye, all, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice um, acceptable to God by Je uh, Jesus Christ. Note, it is all of God. It is all due to God's work. He is the one who raises up the Savior. Note also that the Savior is the object of marvel and wonder. And we, you know, we know there's a lot of Marvel and we know there's movies talk about the Marvel universe and, and the wonders. Uh, I've seen a great wonder, which is, I'm not, seeing, I'm not sure how many people have seen the Grand Canyon. That was a great wonder to me. I got to see the Grand, the Grand Canyon and um, I remember people getting off the bus and as they were getting off the bus, the first things that were coming out of their mouth, I'm not sure if they believed in God or not, but they were saying, oh my God, look at this, oh my God. And, and when you look at these things, these great things of the earth, as great as they look, they cannot be compared, they can't be compared to the work of our Lord and Savior and the work of his body, amen? Thought one, the church and its believers have two dynamic challenges in this point. The church must grow. It must be bringing new stones, believers, and fitting them into the building of God. The church must be adding on to the building. Its structure is not yet finished. Every believer within the, in the building is part of the building and expected to fulfill its function within the building. That is, every believer is a laborer, a laborer who is expected to be busy adding on, on to the building of the church. We are all to be bringing new stones and fitting them into the great building of God, the church. Uh, any comments on, to the things that we've been reading? Anything uh, that I've been saying? Well, Deacon, um, this is a, a very good start to the lesson on tonight, and it shows how important it is for each one of us to work together in unity. Um, and as you have in the diagram there, the, the church as, uh, with the crosses and those apostles and prophets next to it. But the most vital thing that I've been learning lately and learned over the years is that, you know, if 
the church is not going to um, grow if it's not built on a foundation of Jesus Christ. And if it's not built on that foundation, it can't grow to what God was trying to, to establish in that part of the world where he's establishing that church. And it's so, so vital, amen, that we work together, but everyone understands their part, right? You know, some yeah. of us are maybe teachers, preachers, elders, ministers, pastors, but then you're going to have some people that's going to sweep floors. You're going to have some people that just serve food, uh, hospitality, um, all these different areas. But once we put all those um, functions together, amen, and we keep Christ as the center, then we function as what we call the body of Christ. And then we can make a difference in the world. And I think that's what's happening um, with a lot of churches now that are starting to unite, starting to, to get back to the foundation of unity, amen, because I think the enemy has had us divided as churches through race, financial uh, situations, but now God is speaking to all the churches and um, many of the churches now are not even looking at big or small, because if, you're, if you recall, on the day uh, they shut every church down, we, we, we all became the same size church. We, we all had no members that could come into the pews. Amen. We all became uh, what we call uh, internet um, pastors and internet churches, because now that was the only way that you can minister to your congregation. So anyway, I just wanted to say um, that is so vital is us working together in unity, build the things that Christ is asking us to do. And that's what the uh, initial church in Acts had, was that unity. And that's the foundation and the model of how we should build our churches today is from that foundation of what we saw happen in the book of Acts. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to share that. Amen. Amen. I appreciate that. Uh, and that, that is so true. Um, and we do thank God uh, that we put down all the different preaching that was going on and that was dividing us. Uh, but now you hear more ministers uh, getting back to the word, um, making Christ the, the chief cornerstone and, and talk about, you know, these are, are the last days and how we need to come together and go out to the highways and byways and, and, and reach people. Um, instead of arguing over different things, we're focusing on the word of God, because that's one thing we can't get wrong. <laughs> we can get wrong a lot of different things, politics, uh, food, you know, what tastes good, what doesn't, what this does, and, and you know, what helps a person out, um, different religions, but we know the word of God uh, keeps us all centered. It keeps us all as one, amen. And this picture here, you guys can see the people holding each other up. You can see that it says the church does not uh, does not close only the building because we are the church, the living body of our Lord Jesus, and we are everywhere. Just as Elder Kenny had mentioned when COVID happened, we was really just, again, we was back to being one church, and we truly was everywhere. We was in Africa, Israel, uh, Middle East. You got, you know, some in Russia, China. Uh, Japan, all over the world, but we again, we are everywhere, and we're all different colors, uh, from all different backgrounds and different cultures, but we're still one in Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, can I have a reader for the next scriptures where it says, go ye therefore? All right. I'll take it then. Um, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth of the of the world. Matthew twenty six nineteen through twenty, Acts one and eight reads, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. For we cannot speak the things which we have not seen and heard. Acts 4 and 20. Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words 
of this life, Acts 5 and 20. Second Corinthians 4.13 reads, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoke and have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Second Timothy 2 and 2. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. 1 Peter 3.15 Come and hear all ye that fear God and I will declare what he had done for my soul. Psalm 66.16 Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Isaiah 43 and 10. Isaiah 63 and 7 reads, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord hath bestowed upon us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which, hath, which he hath bestowed upon them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. That, I like uh, that Isaiah 43 and 10. Yes. You know, he's, he's telling us that, you know, we are his witnesses, saith the Lord. And my servant whom I have chosen, that you may go and believe me and understand that I am he. Before yeah. me, there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Any God is formed is made by man's hand and it was built. Um, and then they're worshiping that. But anyone that tell you that there was a God before our Lord and Savior is a liar. You have to look at the scriptures. The scriptures tell you exactly there was none before him, only he, and there will be none after him, only he, which is our Lord and Savior, God through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, number five, and those scriptures were pretty much everything that we had mentioned earlier. Uh, we had spoke about it already with, through all those scriptures, but those scriptures back up uh, everything that was mentioned here today. Point five. Um, the universal uh, temple, church, the universal temple. Fifth, the church is pictured as a worldwide temple, as the universal church. Note the word all. All believers make up the holy temple of God. All believers are pictured as a building, a universal church being structured for God's presence. Each new believer and each generation of believers are seen as being placed and fitted into God's universal structure. As the little chorus says, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. All believers of every generation who are being called from all across the world are being fitted into God's universal building, which will literally be a new heaven and earth. We the church, the believers of the earth from all generations shall be a part a, built, a building stone of the new universe when God makes the new heavens and earth. Ephesians 2.19, however, note that each person is placed into a structure only by Christ. Only the person in the body of people who come to Christ as the chief cornerstone are fitted into the building. A man must build upon the foundation laid by the apostles and prophets, which is the foundation of Christ himself. All other cornerstone or any other foundation constructs some other kind of building, not God's building. People may not follow their own thought structure or some man's profound philosophy or even their own lifestyle, but it is not God's building that they structure. In Christ and in Christ alone upon and upon a foundation laid by the apostles, is God's building being structured? Thought one, 
The gospel of Jesus Christ is open to all people everywhere. There is no place for division and prejudice, privilege and partiality, classes and caste systems in the temple of the, or the church of God. Every nation, even the uttermost part of the earth, it is to be brought into the universal temple or church of God. Amen. And I'll read uh, these scriptures. And I say unto also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16 and 18. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19. And the gospel must first be published among all nations, Mark 13 and 10. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16 and 15. And that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, Luke 24, 47. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and, and unto the uttermost part of the earth, Acts 1 and 8. For there is no difference between a Jew and a Greek, for the same Lord is over all, is rich unto all that call upon him, Romans 10 and 12. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3, 28. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and, of, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the Gospels, Ephesians 3 and 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, Revelation 14 and 6. And this, these scriptures was basically, uh, if you look at these scriptures, they were they're just basically a blueprint from the cornerstone, from the chief cornerstone that is built up among all of us. Because it's saying, you know, how do you, how does it happen? Upon this rock, he will build his church. After it's been built, you go forth and teach all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son. And then you must go forth and publish among them, after you've been baptized, you're, now you're able to go out and speak to all the nations. And he's telling you to go and preach the gospel to every creature, that they must repent for the remissions of their sins. And then they will receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And then he's going on to telling everyone, after you've received the power of the Holy Ghost, now there is no Jew or Greek. We're all the same, no matter you're rich or poor. Um, we're all one in Jesus Christ. Um, and then that we're fellow heirs. We're citizens of the same body. And now the, the angels um, are now going out and they're preaching unto them, everyone on the earth and every nation, every tongue and kindred and every people. So it's like a blueprint of the chief's cornerstone starting with Christ and how the word goes out and being preached to all the nation and how we're being blessed with the angel, the ministering angel is, is preaching out also to everyone. Amen. Any uh, comments? Everyone good? Hey, Deacon, you might want to... Yes, Minimize some of uh, the picture because you can't see all the oh, hands. Okay. There's other people on. So you might, somebody could be uh, putting up your hand, but you can't see everyone. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, good. Are we good there? Yeah, you're good now. Mm -hmm. Okay. But everyone's good though, right? All right. So number six, which is the last part. We'll be finishing up. Church, the Holy Spirit in their dwelling presence. This is the sixth picture of the Holy Spirit 
The church is pictured as a local temple at the local church. Note that Paul now uses the word you, referring to Ephesians church in particular. Each local church is pictured as a building structure for God's presence in Ephesians 2, 22. And each member is, is seen as an integral and essential stone being placed and fitted into the building, Ephesians 4, 16 and 1 Peter 2 and 5. And in Ephesians 4, 16 says, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint in which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That is Ephesians 4, 16, talking about each part of the body, um, how it's important. 1 Peter 2 and 5 says, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And that was 1 Peter 2 and 5. The church stability lies in each stone being placed and fitted and cemented by the same Lord and by each stone holding up its load, fulfilling its purpose in the structure. Note that the local church exists for the purpose of providing a habitation, a home for the presence of God through, through his spirit. The church is to allow the spirit of God to live out his life through the church. The Holy Spirit dwells within the church to help his believers when they are troubled, distressed, or confused, discouraged or dispirited, suffering or dying, joyful and excited, slothful and inactive, witnessing and teaching, preaching and ministering. The Spirit of God dwells within the church to conform the church to the image of God's will. The effectiveness of any local church depends upon how much it allows the Holy Spirit to dwell within and to control this body of members. Now, as I was thinking about that, if we relate that to even our workplace, um, whoever owns the business, the CEO, um, from that point on down, the, the lay people in that building, they still have to work well in order for that whole business or that corporation to work right. Uh, when, when it's not working right or from the top, it's not working well, and that, that goes down to the lay people and it's not working well, then that business starts to fall apart. Uh, but we know with Christ being the chief cornerstone, his Holy Spirit is in the church, which is the people itself. And the church is for, as we just mentioned, all the different things here with the trouble, distress, the suffering, but also the witnessing and teaching and preaching and ministering. We know that with Christ, um, everything is, is well put together. This is something that Christ had put together since the beginning of time. So we know it will not fail. Um, but like I said, in any organization, uh, if the foundation is not good and the people are not sure what's going on because they're not getting a, a great message from up top, then that business starts to fall apart. Amen. I'm pretty sure everyone uh, can relate uh, with that. It's a blessing at my job because my job, uh, I believe, has been around roughly over 200 something years. So we know the foundation has been really good. It started over in England uh, uh, over 200 something years ago. And um, I'm not sure I've only been in America, but I know their foundation has been good enough that they've been around for a long period of time. We've seen business come, we've seen business go. Um, and if their foundation isn't right, they, all, they tend to fall apart. Amen. Any comments? Yes. Yeah, I had one. When you were talking about uh, longevity of your corporation, you can also relate that to the church as well. Um, you know, in a few weeks, we're going to be celebrating Restoration's uh, 37th church anniversary. So that's yes. 37 yes. years of the ministry being in effect in our community. Um, it's such a blessing to know that Restoration is built on a true foundation of Jesus Christ. 
because it has been able to withstand storms, uh, withstand the pruning, uh, mm -hmm. withstanding people coming and going, but yet the church is still standing because it was always built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. It was never built on money, superstar pastors, you know, um, the, uh, the denomination, but it was has always been uh, built on the word of God and Jesus Christ. And that longevity um, is showing with this, with us celebrating 37 years in the, in the next month here coming up. And you think about the churches that started at the same time that were not built on the same foundation. Many have gone. And not saying that, you know, why they're gone. We don't know why they're gone. That's between them and God. But when you look at the churches that have been truly built on a foundation, most of them have longevity where their church has been in existence, like you were saying, your corporation for many years. Amen. Amen. And, and we, unfortunately, uh, we saw through the COVID years, um, many churches have, have fallen by the wayside. Uh, they couldn't financially support it. Uh, the people left and never returned. Uh, we don't know the, the whole reasons. We just know that some of the church have fallen by the wayside. Um, but even still, we know that, you know, if they are the body of Christ, they're still in the church, even though their building's not there. Um, but we do thank God for restoration because the foundation has been there. And through the ups and downs, we're still still going and we're going strong. Uh, that's the great thing about it. We are going uh, strong. Amen. So I'm going to finish up uh, with the last scriptures. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, but it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Again, this is not talking about the building itself. Um, John 14 and 17. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8 and 9. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God and you are not your own, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwell, dwelleth in us. 2 Timothy 1 and 14. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaching you all of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it have taught you, you shall abide in him, 1 John 2 and 27. And again, that's talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, and the Holy Spirit that's in all of us, amen. So if the Holy Spirit is speaking to each one of us this very second, the one thing that we know, the Holy Spirit may speak different things to each one of us, but the Holy Spirit will not contradict the word of God. That's what keeps us all together. That's what keeps us unified in unity. So no matter what um, is spoken, you, with the power of the Holy Spirit, everyone's going to speak, but they're going to speak from the word of God and not of themselves. Because when you speak of yourselves, then you got your opinion. And then this person has their opinion. And then once you start to have these different opinions, now the church starts to divide itself because everybody have opinion. But the word of God is not opinion. It's historical fact. Like I heard someone say about, about the word, uh, about the God's Bible, um, and the way he said it, it's his, his historical fact. Unlike a fable, unlike a fairy tale, when it, said, it starts off by saying, once upon a time, there was in the land, and it goes on to tell this fable, this, this, this story. But with the word of God, it's historical fact, is backed up by uh, all the historical findings over in Israel, is backed up by witnesses, is backed up by the miracles that which was performed yesterday, is still being performed today. It's backed up by the anointing, the Holy Spirit. So it's backed up 
not just by word, but also deed, also by action. Amen. So it's not just uh, we're just speaking like people will tell us, well, you're just speaking something out of the Bible. How do I know it's true? Well, you know it because we're witnesses. We've all got testimonies of, of everything that's going on. Um, and it's funny how you can ask a question, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will either remind you or you'll be talking to someone and all of a sudden they'll, the Holy Spirit will bring that information or that confirmation to you by maybe your, um, something you read, something you watch on TV. Uh, you can have a dream. God will speak to you in many different ways. Um, it's not, not always like you hear uh, in, the, in those stories with Moses and you hear this loud, deep voice and, and he's calling your name, but it, it may be a sweet, small, still voice uh, that's speaking to you, but you know it's true because it's not going to... Um, it's not going to go against the word of God. It's never going to go against the word of God. Anybody that's speaking anything other than the word of God is not unified in Christ. They're speaking some other language. They're speaking some foreign religion, and they're trying to separate you from the body of Christ by giving you something else that's not the word of God. Amen? Any other comments? We all good? All right, well, that, finish, that finishes up um, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, we did, we done pretty good. We got through it pretty, not real fast, but it's taking a while. But uh, I pray that everyone has learned something. Uh, we're looking at going to chapter 3, possible with a different um, commentary. We're not sure yet, um, but you, either way, you will get the packet, um, Lord willing, next week. Amen. I'm going to leave you with uh, Elder Kenny uh, for the comments afterwards. Amen. Uh, good evening. Um, first, we would uh, give space over to uh, Pastor Imogene. She's on tonight. Uh, oh, she, she has on? any I final didn't... comments. Oh, okay. She might be away. She might be okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm quitting. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, how you doing, Pastor? <laughs> I was late on uh, this evening, but I thank God for the Bible study and Thank God for the Holy Spirit that indwells us and the Holy Spirit that teaches us, the Holy Spirit, you know, that guides us and leads us. Uh, yeah, I, just, I came in on that portion when you were talking about the Holy Spirit being in each of us and how uh, the instructions were given, how uh, we were to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the key is that. And you made a comment that all of us were being or could hear or were receiving something from the Holy Ghost. And it's amazing because what I will get out of it, the next person might not get out of it based on that level of growth or that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And but the main thing that each one will be taught and I thank God for each one that's, you know, here and uh, our guests that are on, um, that are, you know, here with us at doing the Bible study. I thank God for each of them as well. And, uh, but the key is that thank God for the Holy Spirit. You were saying quite a few uh, things that I could have, uh, can comment on when you were talking about the fact that the, the word of God is not a, in a private interpretation. <laughs> mm, yes. Because scripture interprets scripture. That's how you're yeah. going to verify it. Not by no man's opinion, but by mm -hmm. scripture. Interpret scripture. So just to, um, I won't have much more to say because I'll be rambling on because tonight I'm kind of exhausted. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting in from the daycare. And that's why I was late. But I just thank God I wanted to get in on at least the last part of the uh, Bible study. 
And I thank God that the Holy Spirit dwells us and thank God for the church that's been, you know, established on the foundation that Jesus laid and we want to continue just adding to that foundation. So that's Pastor Kenneth. I'm done, Pastor Dickon Anderson. I think Pastor Kenneth. Yes. I'm okay. Done. Thank you, Pastor. Right, You're that. welcome. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, I'll do this real quick here. Um, uh, the, the announcements for uh, tomorrow uh, morning at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. tomorrow is time of restoration radio broadcast. Uh, we all by now should know how we get there, WTMRradio.com. Uh, if you're in the Philadelphia, New Jersey area, you can get there by 800 a.m. radio. Um, our church website, rcfchurch.org, uh, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts under Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. Uh, Pastor is in a series on contentment. Uh, part four is on tomorrow. It's a dynamite series um, teaching us how to understand where Paul was in his situation to learn how to be content, whether you have it, whether you don't have it, uh, if you have it going on or you don't have it going on but it's teaching us to rely on Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a very good series. Uh, tomorrow, 10 a.m., 8 p.m., uh, you can check out that series on contentment by our senior pastor, Imogene Ingram. I believe this Saturday is the fourth Saturday as well. This should be the Lindenwall Food Bank, uh, the Lindenwall Speed Line this Saturday morning. Uh, those volunteers who have volunteered, uh, we know we meet there at 7.30 a.m. on Saturday mornings uh, to help distribute food food for those in need um, in that particular area. Um, uh, upcoming services, uh, keep in mind and uh, set your calendars. Uh, April 7th and um, April 9th is uh, uh, Easter services. Uh, Good Friday service is Friday, April 7th. Uh, and Easter Sunday, April 9th, uh, two um, of the one of the, I don't wanna say one of, but it's a great time to come to the church. We know we have a lot of visitors and guests. So we inviting all to come out on both that Friday for our Good Friday service where we have ministers, deacons, and lay people share uh, the last seven words of Jesus and then come on uh, Sunday, April 9th and get a dynamite word uh, from the speaker of the hour during that time uh, that's referencing to our Savior Jesus Christ and his death. Uh, thank you, Deacon Kevin. That's all I have for tonight for his announcements. Thank you. Um, I have one announcement also. To add, uh, this Sunday is Women's Fellowship. <laughs> Sorry, Elder Kenny. <laughs> yeah, this Sunday is Women's Fellowship immediately following service. And we're uh, in the book, Teach Us to Pray by Corey Russell. And we'll be in chapter one at his feet. Sorry for the interruption. That's fine. All right, uh, so I'm gonna close out uh, with prayer um, as we, in this Ephesians chapter two, Wednesday night Bible study. Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, our chief cornerstone, Father Christ, dear Lord, we love you and we thank you, Father Christ. Father Christ, dear Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, that with the power of your Holy Spirit, our Lord and Savior, with the power of your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that we could be unified, dear Lord, as one, dear Lord, in you, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, dear Lord, that we continue to move forward, uh, dear Lord, together as one, Heavenly Father, each one holding up the next one, Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, for unity, and we bind that enemy, dear Lord, of division, Heavenly Father. Father, we, we know that you always add you are about addition, dear Lord, where the enemy is about subtraction. So, Father, dear Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, that you allow us, Heavenly Father, to join together to read your word, dear Lord. Father, I pray, dear Lord, as our senior pastor, Imogene uh, Ingram, had mentioned, Father Christ, dear Lord, that uh, the word that we receive, Heavenly Father, even if it's not for us at this very time, dear Lord, but we might be able to give it to someone else, dear Lord, so that someone else uh, can be partakers, dear Lord, of your fruit, Heavenly Father, dear Lord. Father, we thank you, Father Christ, dear Lord, that we continue to go forth, dear Lord. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, for boldness, dear Lord. 
continue uh, boldness, stronger boldness, dear Lord, that we're able to speak your word, Father Christ, dear Lord, uh, uh, and, and take the time, dear Lord, to cut out the speaking of, of everything else, dear Lord, that is not edifying, dear Lord, that is not the building up of the church, dear Lord, that is not uh, uh, for the strengthening of the church, dear Lord. But Father, dear Lord, we pray that we stay in line, dear Lord, with your stones, Heavenly Father, not getting out of place, not getting out of line, dear Lord, but staying, dear Lord, built upon your foundation, dear Lord, uh, that we are able, dear Lord, to go out and reach others, dear Lord, to share the gospel, to preach the gospel, dear Lord. For, dear Lord, we know, Heavenly Father, we can't take nothing with us, Father Christ, only, Heavenly Father, souls, dear Lord. Uh, and we just pray, Heavenly Father, as we water, dear Lord, or seed, Heavenly Father, we know that you always give the increase, dear Lord. And, Father Christ, dear Lord, we pray, Heavenly Father, for this Wednesday night Bible study, dear Lord, uh, that more stones come into play, dear Lord, and more stones come into uh, restoration, dear Lord, that we continue to build up each and every single day, each and every single week, Heavenly Father, each and every single month and every year until you come, dear Lord. The foundation, Heavenly Father, is there, dear Lord, but the building is still growing, Heavenly Father, a living organism, dear Lord, a organism that will not stop until the day you return, dear Lord. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, on this evening. And Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I lift up uh, the sick and, and the shut in, dear Lord. I pray your blessing upon them, dear Lord. Uh, families that are dealing with uh, uh, issues and, and dealing with losses, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one, Heavenly Father, represented, dear Lord, on this Wednesday night Bible study, dear Lord. I pray that you bless their family, bless their loved ones, dear Lord. And especially, dear Lord, uh, I pray that you open the ears of those who have yet to know um, you as their Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father. Again, we thank you on this evening. We thank you for the rest of this night. I pray that everyone have a good night's sleep, dear Lord, and wake up uh, I'm just refreshed, dear Lord, and ready uh, to give a word to anyone that's ready to receive it. In your wonderful, holy, precious name, King Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. Good night, everyone. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night.